Hello everyone, this is Rexer of the YouTube channel Not Quite There Gaming, bringing you another episode of my visionary advice build or uh, guide series, if you will. This time we're going to be taking a look at Diablo 3. Uh, because of the way that Diablo 3 is so dependent on the items that you find, I can't quite yet make really high level guides since I'm just not there yet with my item score and what have you. But uh, I would like to share with you uh, a setup, a skill setup, that I have found has served me very well while leveling my Witch Doctor and generally trying to farm items to get to that high level point. Now, uh, I've said that I'm not going to be focusing on items, but I just want to say that I really enjoy using this particular belt, the Harrington Waste Guard on my Witch Doctor, with uh, the special bonus it has of giving you bonus damage on opening chests. It uh, synergizes really well with the way I play my Witch Doctor as a minion master, because he can roam around behind uh, the line of engagement and grab those chests and other items that trigger this uh, special bonus and the special bonus as far as I know doesn't uh, directly uh, doesn't immediately apply to applied damage over time spells but it does immediately apply to any minions you already have summoned so it is very useful in that sense and especially if you hold off on casting your damage over time spells and other spells until after you have gathered this bonus. Obviously it uh, applies immediately to minions because it would be pretty imbalanced if, it, um, if the damage bonus only applied at the time that you summon minions because then you could be running around with minions that have the bonus applied at all times. So yeah, anyway, I really love this item, and I would suggest that you give it a shot. It's um, fun, if nothing else. But, as I said, I won't be focusing on items too much. So, so let's get to the skills before I blather on too much. I like to use Plague of Toads as my primary with Explosive Toads, because I have a few fire-enhancing uh, items. And... You can obviously use your own, I mean, this is probably the least, least important part of my skill setup. But I find that when running minions, the biggest uh, danger in perhaps uh, any minion master build in any game is that your minions will become unfocused and end up engaging too many enemies. So... Um, and the damage that they can do is thereby spread out and not as effective and it will take more time to get through packs of enemies, if you will. But if you have good area of effect damage, you can deal with those situations better. Um, the Witch Doctor minions have their own area of effect uh, runes, which I also use, but I find that Plague of Toads with the explosive toads rune uh, really helps in those situations because it really tears through uh, large mobs of enemies that are trying to um, steal your minions attention also to that effect uh, this build generally uh, handles packs of enemies very well but also works very nicely on um, packs of uniques and uh, bosses as well. I focus a lot on damage over time spells, first of which is Locust Swarm. Now, also uh, with the Fire Rune, Searing Locusts, Locust Swarm is a very good damage over time spell, uh, but you have to be in range to cast it, that's why I have it on my secondary to keep in mind that I have to have positioning to cast it, like I have to with Plague of Toads. It's a very nice damage over time spell, and it spreads on its own, so that's very good, um, because you can just cast and forget. 
Also, I use Haunt, which has recently been buffed in a recent patch. It's gone up quite a bit in damage, if you can take a look at that 4000% weapon damage as called over 12 seconds. That, that used to be a lot less. The duration has also been increased, so the overall damage boost to the skill is not that huge, but the damage per second boost, I mean. It's not that huge, but it's it's still very useful, and the cost reduction makes it an easily spammable skill. I use the Resentful, Resentful Spirits rune that casts two haunts uh, at the same time, which makes it much easier to infest a large uh, mob of uh, enemies. You can use some other runes if you'd like on haunt, but personally I found that this one is the most useful for me. Uh, I can't specifically, can I specifically recommend any of the other ones, but feel free to experiment of course. And lastly in damage over time spells is Corpse Spiders with the Spider Queen rune. Now this isn't specifically a, a damage over time spell, but it kind of spawns a mobile non-targetable non creature that uh, acts like the center of a damage over time spell. It's not a minion really, it's a mobile damage over time spell. Kind of funky. Now, I would recommend uh, all of these skills at any stage of your Witch Doctor's development with any runes that you find available at the time. Obviously, with the runes that I have been, that I will be suggesting in this build, more so than others. But Corpse Spiders specifically, I would not recommend until you can get your hands on the Spider Queen rune. Luckily, it's pretty, pretty close in the uh, list. Next, we have Zombie Dogs with the Burning Dogs upgrade. Now, this skill is not so much focused on damage because zombie dogs without specific items uh, don't go that damage focused but they're really good for body blocking and body blocking saves lives kids so um, I even have a ring that would turn these dogs into one huge more powerful dog but I don't want to use it because I need the body blocking ability that having many zombie dogs instead of one zombie dog gives me. I use the uh, burning dogs upgrade again because I have a lot of fire damage uh, bonuses on my items and because I'm a bit uh, iffy about the way rabbit dogs stacks or doesn't stack. Um, yeah. Lastly, we have Gargantuan. I use the Big Stinker upgrade because it again gives him a nice little area of effect. And sadly, it's not fire, but the fire uh, rune for Gargantuan also gives him a maximum lifespan, and I can't deal with that right now. Um, Passives wise, I use Pierce the Veil for a damage increase. The mana cost problem, the mana cost um, downside is uh, somewhat inconsequential because the only big mana spender you have is Locust Swarm. Haunt has been recently buffed to cost a lot less mana, so you can safely spam that. Corpse Spiders has no cost, and neither do your minion spells or your signature spell. Uh, next is Fetish Sycophants, which has a chance of spawning those cute little fetish enemies, which are now your friends. Enemies, I say, because you might remember similar enemies from Diablo 2, and it's so nice to be able to throw them at other people instead of having to bear them yourself. That alone makes this skill worth it, but 
uh, even if you don't taste that particular um, bit of humor or satisfaction, then these enemy, these um, pets that you spawn on a chance, on a proc chance, are still very useful. A for body blocking again, and B because. Um, if they follow the same damage rules as the fetish army uh, fetishes, then they do pretty good damage as well. Next we have Midnight Feast, one additional zombie dog and 50% bonus damage on zombie dogs and gargantuan. This is a pretty much must have for any minion master build I would say. Uh, nothing to really comment on that. And lastly, I uh, chose Zombie Handler, which gives me one additional zombie dog and increases the health of my zombie dogs and gargantuan by 20%. You could replace this with anything else you want. Um, I personally prefer to have the additional zombie dog again for body blocking, and um, the extra health doesn't hurt either. I don't really have uh, survivability problems with my minions, but um, I like to be safe. And I don't really like uh, any of the other skills that much. Uh, there would be, of note, Creeping Death as a viable alternative, which works well with the uh, heavy use of Haunt, and Locust Swarm that we have in this build. Now, this is obviously a very area of effect centered build, and I want to say that it has served me very well while leveling. It is serving me very well nice uh, right now on Torment 1, and I'm very happy with this build. I urge you to give it a shot. It's uh, as I've said, not a very professional build, but it is fun and effective. With that in mind, let's uh, give it a go. I'm gonna grab my Templar, because I like having him around for extra healing, mostly. And let's try... Um, do, 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 this one. This one seemed interesting. Let's see if we can find the event quickly enough. Now, I might be a little overgeared for Torment 1, but I don't really think so. Uh, my wizard uh, definitely didn't have such a breeze of a time through this difficulty with comparable gear score before I cannibalized all her gear to give to my witch doctor. <laughs> As you can see, with a fast uh, primary weapon, you can spawn quite a few fetishes. And here we are, the event. Haunt also jumps to other enemies if it doesn't run its full course on its initial target. So that's very nice. Along with the natural spread of um, Locust Swarm and the fact that uh, Corpse Spiders with the Spider Queen upgrade is a mobile damage over time effect that find its own, finds its own targets basically. You can... you don't really waste anything for investing yourself into a pack of enemies because your damage over time spells uh, migrate nicely from enemy to enemy. I should have saved those for the event because as you see they trigger my belt and the difference is pretty good, pretty big, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's give this a shot. Hopefully I won't die in a bear as myself. Bro. 
upgrade. Whoa. And there you go. Pretty fast victory. One other thing I want to say before I close this off is from my personal testing uh, a faster weapon has a negative impact on the amount of damage that a damage over time spell does in total. I can't say if the damage over time spell um, expires faster, I have not tested this, but per casting a faster uh, weapon uh, will cause your damage over time spells to do less damage than a uh, slower weapon. I have tested this on uh, comparably equal DPS weapons of different speeds and it seems that it is always the case. So if you want to go continue focusing heavily on damage over time spells uh, you might want to invest into a slower weapon. But your minions on the upside seem to not really care about this. If you have a faster weapon or a slower weapon they will uh, make their own calculations to scale with your uh, raw damage per second. So if uh, I also I don't uh, I don't really know what the status of the uh, auras, the damage auras for gargantuan and zombie dogs are in that respect because they kind of follow the same rules, the same aspect of a damage over time uh, ability. But uh, even with a fast weapon you can benefit greatly from the procs of fetish sycophants. With a slower weapon you will have more damage per casting from your damage over time spells. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're figuring out your end game build. But this is not an end game build and as I said it's a nice build, it's a fun build and it served me well. I hope you like it, I hope it will serve you well as well. Now this has been it for my cookie cutter build for Witch Doctor as a uh, minion master and damage over time expert, blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching, thank you especially to anyone who has uh, stuck through the entire video. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video or found it informative please remember to subscribe for more. If you would like to if and if you have the time Please also uh, take a few moments to comment, thumbs up or share, it really helps me out, it really helps the channel grow. And this is it. So, thanks again for watching. This has been Rexer of the YouTube channel Not Quite There Gaming, signing off.